Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn what is Data Stretch in SQL Server 2016 and how to enable it. In this demo, we'll be learning number one, what is Data Stretch and what, why it is important, why this feature is added in SQL Server 2016. Number two, how to enable Data Stretch in SQL Server 2016. When you install SQL Server 2016, it is not enabled. You have to enable Data Stretch. Uh, number three, overview of different options of Data Stretch once you enable Data Stretch. So let's uh, talk about Data Stretch. Basically, number one, it enables you to store historic data on MS Azure storage. Uh, number two, enables you to retrieve historic data faster than normal ways. Number three, cost effective since MS Azure storage is cheap. Uh, number four, very little latency. And I'll give you an example. Let's say that um, you're working for an organization and it is a manufacturing company and uh, you have product out there and the warranty is about 20 years. So you have two options basically. You will have to keep uh, um, 20 years worth of data and uh, you can keep it two ways number one you can keep it on your expensive local storage or you can basically send that uh, historic data to some other cheap location and once you need it then you can call back that um, uh, uh, storage uh, and uh, get your data that you need which will take a whole lot longer to retrieve that data so that's why I put number two up here that it enables you to re retrieve historic data faster than normal ways because uh, it is very expensive believe me to keep the historic data on your expensive storage which is local so why uh, the, uh, that, that's the same reason that uh, it is cost effective since MS Azure storage is cheap and it's always connected to your system so uh, the latency is very little let's say that you have the data on your local where it takes about one second to retrieve that data the historic data it will take about five seconds to um, retrieve the data from MS Azure it's not bad but it saves you tons of money and tons of time if you are sending your historic data to some other location just to save some money so um, I am big fan of uh, this data stretch after I read about it and also I have played a little bit about it to check the latency and believe me it's not bad so let's go ahead and uh, First, uh, let me uh, take you to SQL Server Management Studio where we will take a look at uh, how we can enable data stretch. So here's my SQL Server Management Studio 2016 and I have database right here. In order to enable, um, let's, let's take a look on first that uh, data stretch where the option is. If you right click on the da database, go to task and you will have option right here, enable data, database for stretch. So what happen is that if you enable this database then you can um, basically um, the historic data that is in in this database you can stretch it back to MS Azure so let's click on enable uh, data storage all right um, first this wizard this will wizard will help us to configure our uh, data stretch to MS Azure so the first thing is pre-check if you take a look on you can directly click on pre-check or you can uh, click on next so let's click on pre-check as you can see that uh, what is saying is stretch feature is not enabled on your server in order to enable stretch feature you can uh, basically uh, run this command which is this uh, um, sp underscore configure remote data archive one and reconfigure you can copy that from here or you can click on more options right here and it'll take you basically to the same uh, T-SQL that you can run right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that from Microsoft website and minimize this. And I will go on, click on databases. You can run in any database, but it is a good idea to run in a master since it's configuration. So I'll paste this here. What it does is it's gonna help us to enable our data stretch so this is basically how you enable your data stretch and then you can go in further settings if you notice right here it will not go uh, let you go next until you enable that so let's go ahead and run this all right our data uh, stretch is enabled so let's go back and click next cancel this do it again Go to task, enable database for stretch. Once you do that, as you notice right here, the pre-check sign, or the pre-check up here is gone. So you can directly proceed to the next step, which is Microsoft Azure sign-in. You have to have Microsoft Azure subscription and um, your uh, SQL server where you wanted to put this database should be 
uh, up and running and all the rules and everything that we will take a look once we sign in and uh, we will take a look on the setting so click next this is I I already have the subscription Microsoft subscription so as you can see that this is my subscription so I'm gonna click on stretch setting I don't have any VM SQL Server VM out in the um, uh, Azure so um, I'll just go through some settings with you you can go ahead and uh, select the location right here by default central US comes on and it may be uh, uh, depending on where you are so you can click here and these are the locations of Microsoft Azure whatever is the feasible location that you are in and where your subscription is you can select that I'm gonna leave that right there up here is SQL Server um, login if you have a SQL Server up there in um, Microsoft Azure then you need to provide all that information right here if you uh, take a look on configure firewall rule um, and um, firewall rules needs to be configured in order to have communication between your uh, on-premise on and your MS Azure SQL Server um, right here uh, is add current IP of SQL Server engine instance if you uh, wanted to add that you can basically leave that up here and add your IP address so if you have a custom range of IP that it can pick uh, DHCP setting you can click on this and it'll pick whatever is available so all, this is all basically you need to do uh, in order to uh, enable the data stretch on your database uh, next thing it'll do is once you provide this information it'll give you the summary that this is the um, your Azure subscription this is the location and everything do you want to go ahead and do that and once that's the summary is you you will click next and it'll start configuring your data stretch so this is how basically you enable your data stretch in SQL Server 2016 it's going to be very handy keep in mind that uh, as I mentioned right here it's very cost-effective and latency is very little and I hope this video helps.